How are you doing, Willa? Good, how are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. <clears throat> I really enjoyed the movie. Um, oh, good. I think, yeah, the film, it kind of just continuously surprised me from like the moment it started. It was kind of genreless. It was like, it never did what I expected it to. It was at times a thriller, then it was an occasional sort of romance and a drama, then a kind of weird fever dream-like surrealist comedy. I, I loved it. Do I mean, do you, do you remember your first experience reading the script but then, and thinking this, this does feel a bit different to, to other things I've read? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I read it a long time before I ever got the job or shot the movie um and I remember really kind of feeling it was very theatrical it was it read a lot like a play because there are a lot of long scenes it's a really contained piece in general um it's doing interesting things um story-wise and action-wise in order to kind of uh streamline the process of shooting some of those scenes and it just it felt like it was working within a lot of really fun constraints which I always find to be a uh an interesting challenge as you know a, a maker of film and television I mean obviously lots of sort of the actors in there kind of come and go there's a nice sort of like blend of sort of moving and sort of drifting into to different worlds yeah. and different people's lives but John is obviously you know the character Paul uh, played by John Magaro is, is the kind of constant um what was it like collaborating so closely with him on this project because you two were the, the kind of glue that kept this thing together in many ways great I mean John's fantastic we had a really fun time shooting we were all living in that um in the motel where you know the Silver Sands motel we were all living there together for the whatever two weeks plus the return to Silver Sands after you know COVID. We figured out how to shoot during COVID, um, and he's so he's so fun. And for the first probably five or six days of shooting was just us, it was just me and John and all of our scenes that are just together. And we, I think, had an interesting experience when the, the world sort of then opened up and there were new people coming into this little world that we had been building for six or seven days. And I think, you know, in the art imitates life sort of way, it was, um, it was actually a great opportunity to let all of that kind of like shake up those happening on set with new people coming and actually just like inform the, the characters and the way that they're moving through that kind of new space. I'm always just so pleased to see Richard's kind in anything as well. Yeah. It's just his voice, because he plays, um, he's in Inside Out, isn't he? He plays Bing Bong, which I don't know if you've seen that, but that's yeah. the saddest moment. I mean, he's in everything. everything. He is, he is <laughs> prolific. <laughs> Um, but I was, I was going to wonder, you just mentioned about sort of, um, staying in, in the motel. How was that kind of experience? Does it, when you're doing a period thing, does that help maintain the real, real realism of the period settings? I always feel like you could be on a kind of period drama and then yeah. you go back to a kind of modern five star hotel in, in a city and it could be a bit of a departure that could take you out of the moment. Did being in that setting sort of continuously help stay in character in some ways? Yeah, no, it definitely does. It definitely does. I think even kind of more importantly, especially when you're working on a small film like that, where, you know, it's just, everyone wants to be there. None of us are really getting paid at all. And um, I think it, it, it just like builds camaraderie. It's kind of a sense you're living where the crew's living, you all are eating all your meals together. It's really like a different version of how to make a movie because, you know, I mean, if you're working on a bigger budget movie or a TV show, you never have that opportunity to kind of spend that much time with everyone that you're working with. And it just, I don't know, it, it does feel like repertory theater or, or something different than what a, a set normally feels like. And it's, and it's fun. I, I, obviously it's all set around the sort of watershed scandal. Is that, is that a time in sort of American history that has always interested you? Do you know much about it sort of prior to getting yeah. involved? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think that we all, had had Watergate as a sort of crisis point in America at the forefront of the American kind of collective consciousness for the past several years as we've kind of, you know, been navigating some uh, tumultuous political terrain. Um, and I think that it's no surprise that there are currently so many um, different shows that are either directly about Watergate or kind of set in the 70s and that political soup that was the 70s. Um, and so I think, you know, I think 
I, I certainly knew about Watergate. I didn't necessarily know about the 18 and a half minute gap very much before um, reading this script and kind of learning more about that specifically. Um, but I think it is, you know, in the past many years, it has certainly been something that I think we all have been just more aware of than maybe we were before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's just a fascinating concept, isn't it? Just this idea of kind of finding that little gap in the audio, making a whole movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think also the thing that the movie does so well too is it's not, um, obviously it's topical in the sense that it's dealing with things that are adjacent to things that we're dealing with right now. And, you know, I think that it's easy to draw those parallels should you want to. Um, I think it also is a movie that is entertaining in and of its own right for reasons that are outside of that. Um, and I think that, you know, I think that Dan Moy and Dan Mervish did a really good job of kind of leaving it up to the audience what your angle in is. Um, and I kind of, I always like that. I always like it when a, when a movie or a TV show assumes the audience is smart enough to draw their own assumptions from something. I always find that a more interesting, you know, theatrical cinematic experience. Yeah, it kind of manages to be quite relevant and relatable, but doesn't try to be re relevant and relatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, um, but I was, I, was, I was wondering too, because um, obviously you play a sort of this the transcriber. Uh, have you have you transcribed? Are you, have you have you ever had the, the the horrible task of having to transcribe? Well, because I do it all the time, and I, I never... yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I mean, I certainly have like I in college. I I know I was sent like recordings of lectures that I missed, and so I you know I certainly was like over there like listening to them. Have I ever though had to transcribe something word word for word? I don't think so. I don't think so. And I did do a lot of, you know, typing on those old typewriters um, in that scene that we shot in the office. And I don't know how they wrote that fast. <laughs> my mom still types with one. <laughs> my mom still types with one finger. I don't know how she, I don't know how she does. She writes, my mom, sometimes she, sometimes she writes things and she actually just does, must take about four years. But um, I was, I was going to ask, I wanted to talk about, I mean, you've got some really exciting stuff as well coming up. So I want to talk about, is it Wash Me in the River, which you're working yeah. with De Niro and John Malkovich. I mean, how, how's that? I mean, I mean, as some, I mean, obviously, you know, you're, if this is your profession, you're a very sort of professional person, you'll be on set. When you're with people like Robert De Niro, do, is there an element of sometimes seeing him and going, shit, that's, that's Robert De Niro right there. <laughs> definitely, it is definitely a strange experience when you meet people who you've been watching for, you know, years and years and whose work you love. I think it's always funny to me what people, when I meet them are the people who kind of like, I can't keep it together around. That's always like a funny experience because I am, you know, I, I have gotten to work with some amazing, amazing actors who are truly just like, you know, icons. Um, but it, it's, it's always like the ones that kind of, I don't know, catch you off guard. Like I was sitting in front of Viggo Mortensen at um, a hockey game the other day and I, I totally had no chill. I was like over there being like, oh God, I really want to say hi, but like, how do I say hi? <laughs> like just totally like having a, a personal meltdown. Did you and say hello? He was, he was very kind. I, I made him take a picture with me for my dad and, you know, I'm sure he gets it all the time. But it's always, you know, it is always funny though. I find it much easier to kind of keep it together in professional circumstances when I'm not just like a person in the world encountering another person in the world. Um, but yeah, John and and um, and Bob are just fantastic. And I actually had most of my stuff in the movie with Jack Houston. Mm. I don't know if you've ever spoken with him, but he's also fantastic. And um, I think we really had... A, a really wonderful opportunity to kind of like dig into some kind of tricky terrain. And mm. we had like the time to, to do it well, I think. Mm. It's so true what you said that if I, and if I go to like a press conference and you know, De Niro or Scorsese walks in, I go, mm. oh yeah, well that's, that's supposed to be it. If I, see some, if I see some sort of like, sort of even just as, I don't know, someone from just a soap opera walk past yeah. the street, I go, shit, look at that. It's like a scene in the like, outside of the- where you're just like, oh. <laughs> Um, 
Richard. There's also uh, obviously the House of Usher, which is the My yeah. Family series. Um, I was going. I mean, is that have you guys finished that? And I mean, are you allowed to say how your character fits in? I know these things are quite secretive, so no worries if not. I don't know <laughs> if I am technically allowed to say, um, but I think that they are almost done shooting. I've I've wrapped my stuff. Um, and I'm very excited for that. I am really excited. I think that whole creative team is just brilliant. And there are some just, I mean, the whole cast that they've assembled is really fantastic. And I feel very um, grateful and excited to have been part of that project. And, you know, they're just, they, you know, Mike is, is so prolific and all of the stuff that he creates is so complicated and interesting and smart and I truly do not know how he does it so frequently. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, just these, just eventually, obviously, well, 18 and a half to Wash Me in the River to the House of Usher. Yeah. These are really great projects. Is this a reflection, do you think, of an industry that is just kind of flourishing? Because there's so many streaming sites and services now and so many different great creative kind of minds out there. Um, and when you have so many shows, comes of, what comes of that is so many roles. Is, does this feel like a, as good a time as ever, do you think, to be an actor in this industry? Yeah, no, I think it definitely is a great time to be an actor. I think it's a great time to be anybody in the creative business. Um, I think there are so many opportunities and outlets for people to see things that would have ordinarily been harder to see. Um, I think that it also has made it harder for audiences to kind of find what they want to watch just because there is such like a wealth of, uh, of, of options. And I think I find that as a, as an audience, um, member, I'm, I, you know, I can spend like an hour trying to like look between the different streaming surfaces to like remember what it is that I was wanting to watch in the first place. <laughs> so I think that like that's the trade-off for like this kind of you know renaissance of all of this amazing stuff that wouldn't have maybe gotten made otherwise. Um, it's just like you want to you make something amazing you want people to see it and it's kind of harder than it ever has been for it to like cut through everything else and be the thing that people are watching. Yeah, yeah. So it's as good a time as ever to get the jobs. Maybe just the hard, yeah. harder, the hardest time to present them to people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I can spend I can spend the length of a movie just trying to find a movie to watch, <laughs> just flicking through. Oh, I literally it's gotten to the point where it's like I I won't turn on the television unless I know where I'm going and like what I'm trying to watch. Yeah, I just can't. That's a good good move. But does this so does this? I mean, obviously, it's an exciting time for to be in for the industry. But does this feel like an exciting time for you personally in your career? Because it does feel like there's been some really cool stuff coming up or have been sort of created recently. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm. I'm very. I'm very happy, grateful, excited. I. I feel. I feel like I've been very lucky to get to do a lot of different types of projects, play a lot of different types of characters, and. Um, and I have some stuff coming up that I'm excited about that I can't talk about yet, but you know, it, it does feel, it does feel like, um, like an exciting moment. Mm. Has it been a kind of struggle at times? I'm, I'm, the reason I'm asking that is because my cousin um, is sort of left, I've got two cousins both getting into acting, they both kind of left drama school, they're kind of in their early 20s, and yeah. they're really having to kind of persevere, because yeah. it's one of those things where you just need that break, you need someone to take that gamble on you, and I just yeah. wonder yourself, is, have you always maintained the faith, or has it ever been hard across the years in, in and, and picturing where you could be sort of in the future. Yeah, no, I think I think that what I've kind of realized is regardless of, I mean, obviously there's the initial hurdles of like getting your first jobs that then make it more likely that you'll get more jobs. But I think that once you've kind of crossed that um, barrier, I think that at least what I've seen from, you know, friends who are kind of even, you know, more well-known, have more name recognition is it, it the goalposts just kind of move like you're constantly just I don't think you've ever I don't think you ever feel that you've arrived at the place that you want to be I think there's there's constantly sort of like the fight and then there's the internal sort of struggle where I think that anyone who's a creative person in whatever dimension I think there's the inherent self-critique and the turmoil that comes of that I think it's just the 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 various sort of like fights that happen change over the course of a career. But I think you're constantly you know, navigating uncertainty really is what it is um, in like a whole host of different ways. 
No, no, it's, it's, it's a sort of struggling one, but I think, yeah, when it does, when it does lift off, I mean, it sounds like there's nothing, nothing better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but no, anyway, that's, that's all I've had time for today. But thank you so much for speaking to me. And uh, it sounds like you've got, yeah, I can't, maybe we'll catch up in one of these other yeah. things you've got coming up in the future, because it sounds like there's some good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!